What's going on, everybody? Just, uh, figured I'd pop in here, make a short little video for you. Got, uh, a little bit of rain moving through the area today. It doesn't look like it's going to be here much longer, maybe another half hour, 20 minutes, maybe. Um, take a break, get, uh, get regrouped for the rest of the afternoon, get back to it. But I was sitting here in this bank parking lot and just uh, deposited a check and like I said, figured I'd take a little short break, let the rain move through before I get back out there. Got uh, only a handful left to do today. It's actually a, actually a pretty short day for me. Um, I say short, but it's still about eight or nine properties. Um, but how's everybody doing? How's, uh, how's things shaking out for you? I know it's been hot and muggy and just, just brutal here the last couple of days. This whole week's been, uh, been a struggle to say the least. It, uh, you saw the video earlier this week, 93 degrees at 6.30 in the evening. Woke up this morning, it was already 75 and and real humid and toasty but those are the days you want it beats uh beats being rained out like i said i know it's raining a little bit now but this is this is nothing this is more of a nuisance than it is uh wash out weather but i was sitting here thinking just thinking back to some of the jobs we've done over the past couple of years i actually just met with with a lady who wants some some landscaping stuff done and she's been with us since the the first year she's actually one of the first landscaping jobs i did i think um it got me thinking about some other landscaping jobs we've been on some cleanups and tear outs and makeovers and this and that and it got me thinking about when you're first starting out and the jobs you take on you know, when you're first starting out, you you want to take on everything. Take on the world. You're getting ready to launch this, and you're going to make it the best thing ever. So you're eating up as much work as you can. You're probably taking on stuff that you shouldn't. Um, I know I did that with, with a job that first year. And it was about this time of year. It was, it was hot. Um, but I just wanted to warn you to you know not take on more than you can handle starting out I'll tell you a little short story here i actually was contacted by a guy he lives up in the columbus area and his parents live down here he wanted their property cleaned up and reached out for a quote so i got in touch with him and set up a meeting with the parents and went over and i pull up to the property and honestly it looked really good I mean, front landscape was all maintained and mulched. Shrubs were pruned. And yard looked really good. And I'm, okay, well, maybe they're wanting to tear it out or start over. Or they got some stuff they want removed. I don't know. Go up and I knock on the door. And the husband comes to the front door and he's got his arm in a sling. And remember this because this is a little foreshadowing for the end. Um, got his arm in a sling and hey, how you doing? Good. Well, I'm here to, you know, walk around the property with you, get an idea of what you guys want done. Okay. Well, uh, what the work we want done is in the back. Okay. So we go. And one important aspect of the story is everything is on a hill. The only flat spot was where the house was. Everything else was like this, like this, like this. It was crazy. So we walk around back. The guy's telling me a story. He's been sick and had some medical issues for the last couple of years and hadn't been able to keep up on it. Walk to the backyard. It's all overgrown. There's grass back here that's probably a foot tall. No big deal. We can mow that down. Um, he had these two big overgrown shrub areas. I'm talking huge. Um, everything from honeysuckle, um, wild blackberries, raspberries, uh, you name it, it was in there. He wanted those cut out. Then he had this one lone spruce tree growing on the side of the hill that he wanted cut down. And me being naive and starting out, yeah, we can do it. 
We can do anything. We can conquer the world we're going to. I'm like, yeah, it sounds like something we, we should be able to handle. Uh, when you're looking to get it done, well, as soon as you can, I'm getting ready to have surgery on my shoulder to have it repaired. Um, so I'm going to be out of commission for a while and I won't be able to do anything with it. All right, cool. So I go back home and I'm thinking about it and I drove back by the next day to look at everything and I started having those, those second thoughts about stuff. And I'm going to warn you, if you're starting to have second thoughts about a job, it's probably best you don't do it. Because um, your, your mind and your body, you're, you're going to know what's right and what's wrong. Um, but I went against it. Sat down that night, threw together a quote, and the more I thought about it, I'm like, I don't know, I st I, I'm hoping we don't get it, so I quoted it really high. Sure enough, as soon as I sent it over, it was almost immediate, they, they approved it. Okay. So, the day comes, and all credit to my wife for this, she helped me with it, and I think that's the reason she doesn't like to help me anymore with jobs, but, you know, all credit to her, and she got out there and helped, but... It's about 80 degrees when we started, 8 a.m. I went over first, got started on it. Um, she had to drop the kids off at school that morning. I go up, knock on the door. Nobody answers. I'm like, okay, well, he's just had a surgery. He's probably laid up in there. He's at therapy, whatever. Get started on it. Go back. I'm cutting back the big bushes and stuff with the shears and the chainsaw. And I figure we'll just cut everything in the morning. We'll spend the afternoon cleaning up, taking trailer loads of stuff out. We had a 14-foot landscape trailer. Just tarp stuff down the hill, throw it on there. We'll take it to the dump later. It's a great plan until I figured out how much we actually had to take out of there. We spent all morning cutting stuff back. And my wife got there about 9 o'clock. And she's like, what do you want me to do? What, what can I do to help you? And, and I could tell when she walked up the hill, she just had that look on her face like, what did you get me into? And I'm like, oh, I hope she stays. So I handed her a string trimmer and said, I just need you to start clearing grass and brush out back here to their shed. Clear around it. You know, do what you can. Okay. And I know you guys have ran string trimmers before, and you know when you've got, you know, the full length of string out, the engine sounds one way, and then when you start to get narrower and narrower the engine rpms go from we'll say 9,000 rpms to 90,000 rpms well the whole time i'm trimming back bushes about every five minutes i can hear the engine on that poor little string trimmer just wind up to astronomical <laughs> astronomical heights so i stop and go over and hey sounds like that you gotta you know, bang it on the ground and get more string out so she did that most of the morning and it was time to tackle this tree and back then we didn't have the arsenal of saws that that we have now there was no 661 there was no 462 it was just an ms250 and a 291 and i'm looking at this tree and honestly it was a fairly simple tree straight up and down i don't think you could have asked for a straighter tree but where it was on the hill, it was like kind of halfway down. And I'll bet it was 40, 50 foot tall. And of course, still being new to it, I didn't have a rope. So I eyeballed it and went, you know what? I'll just go up as far as I can on the ladder. I'll notch the side of it and I'll just drop it over on, uh, on the side of the hill. Great plan in my head. I go around, I start limbing up, climbing up the ladder, limb up, limb up as far as I can. And uh, get to that point to where I'm like, all right, I'm gonna have to notch it here, drop it that way, everything will be good, it's gonna fall, it's gonna be perfect. I laid the notch into it, and as soon as I started the back cut, the wind started blowing down off the top of the hill. And I watched the top of this tree go from leaning the right way to all of a sudden it's starting to come back the other way. At the bottom of the hill is their patio. Very nice patio. Nice big gazebo, glass tables, everything you can imagine on the patio is on this patio. And in that split second I went, well, this is where it ends. This was fun for the 
couple of months that I have done this, but this is it. Because back then, I didn't have insurance. I was just winging it, hope and a prayer. If you've seen the SpongeBob episode where they discover the graffiti on the back uh, back dumpster behind the uh, I can't even remember the the Krusty Krab. Um, I think it was called Sentence Enhancers. I'm pretty sure every word that came out of my mouth in that 30 second time frame was a sentence enhancer. I hurried up and ran down the ladder, hollered over at my wife. Thankfully, somehow there was grapevine growing up through this tree. We grabbed a hold of one of those vines and I told her, you just lean back and pull, pull as hard as you can. And as soon as I tell you to run, you need to run. We, y'all, when I tell you, we grabbed a hold of this thing and, and pulled with all our might like it was a life and death situation. And, and we did. We grabbed a hold of that, started yanking, and I could feel the, the top of the tree starting to move. And we're starting to get it, starting to get it. And all of a sudden it gets to that tipping point and I can feel it coming over. I yelled at her to get out of the way. I stayed there with it and made sure that it you know, was gonna continue to fall the right way. And as soon as it snapped off, I ran out of the way, that thing hit the ground. We both looked at each other and was just like, this isn't it. This is, nope, nope, shouldn't have done this. But tree hits, tree hits the ground. And it was at that point we decided we're gonna take a break. So we, we sat down kind of gathered our thoughts decided that now's a good time to start uh, cleaning stuff up taking stuff down to the trailer I'll bet we took 15 tarp loads of stuff down to that trailer and I'm talking heaping heavy tarp loads of stuff to the trailer I think I went to the dump four times that day and I had a truck bed full of full of that spruce tree that ended up saving but we started at 8 o'clock. I didn't get out of there until 6 o'clock. When I'm telling you I was exhausted, I was beat. It was every bit 95 degrees that day. The one little bit of wind we had was right when we were cutting that tree. And then it was just stagnant hot. I'm sweating. She's sweating. We're plowing through waters, Gatorades, anything to try to help. And I know at one point she had to leave early to go and get the kids from uh, from school. And I remember looking around, and I could see her down in her car, and she's just sitting there crying. I walked down and see what's going on, and she just, she broke down. She said that, you know, she couldn't do it. She doesn't know how how I do it every day, how, how people do this. She's like, it's not for me. I'm, I'm sorry, I gotta go home. I'm, you know, that's fine. Go home, you need to rest. We uh, ended up finishing. I went back. End of the day, knocked on the door. My wife answers. She's like, oh, hey, you done for the day? I was like, yep. She goes, all right, well, let me get your money for you. And she comes back with half the payment. And I'm like, oh, well, everything's done. And she goes, no, I thought there was more you guys were going to do today. I just figured you'd come back tomorrow and I could I could pay you the rest then. And I'm like, no, we we did the tree and the the two big overgrown areas. We got all that out of there. That's that's what we had discussed. And she goes, oh well, that's not what what my husband had told me. And I'm like, oh, well, what were you guys thinking? She's like, oh, we needed all this back here cut and all that. And I'm like, that's not what we talked about. And she goes, well, let me talk to my husband about it and um, I'll get back with you. I'm like, okay. So she paid me half took off, whatever, dumped the truck. Next day, I don't hear anything from her. And I was kind of stewing on it and it was starting to bother me. So I, I shot her an email at the end of the day. And I was like, hey, you know, I don't, I don't know where the miscommunication happened, but when I had initially walked the property with your husband, it was this, this, and this, and now you're telling me it's all this other stuff. And she's like, well, can you stop back down tonight um, I'll give you the rest of the money and we'll kind of go over things. I'm like, okay. So I go back 
knock on the door, they both answer, and the husband starts apologizing to me, and he's like, you know, after my surgery, I've been on all these painkillers, and it's it's been messing with me. He's like, I honestly don't even remember uh, meeting with you that first day because I was starting to take stuff. He goes, I don't remember what we discussed, and I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, he goes, when you guys were here that day doing all that work, I just, I just assumed you were getting the first part of it done and you were going to do the rest of it the next day. And I'm like, no, that's not what we talked about. And he's like, yeah, I'm real sorry about that. And I'm like, all right, well, you know, I'm, I'm really not interested in doing the rest of the work because I, I'm not set up for it yet. Oh, was well, there anybody you can recommend? And I, I maybe threw out two or three names to him, but, but honestly, that, that job from the start, I should have known better with all the years that I've done this, to not take it on. But I went against my better judgment and said, yep, I can do it. And that's it's very important, guys, that you you listen to yourself when you get into that situation. Um, you know, not only did it completely wear both of us out, you know, there was that risk of that, that treetop falling and, and crushing their, their gazebo, the patio furniture... Um, you know, I don't know if it would have reached the house, but there was so much work that we did there. And, and honestly, looking back, I know I didn't charge enough for it. Um, honestly, that, that should have been like a mid four figure job. And, and that's not nearly what I quoted and got paid for it. Um, but that's, that's one of those lessons you learn. That's one of the hard lessons you learn when you're starting out. You know, you, you think you have to take on everything that's offered to you and and honestly guys you don't it's the nice thing about being a little more established you can start to pick and choose um what jobs you take on and i get it when you're you're starting out you're just trying to get as much work as you can to to stay busy and and show that yes you can do this but but there's some jobs that you know it's just not worth it and that was one of them um so I guess the, the moral of that story is, is, like I said earlier, just when you get yourself into a situation and you're looking at a cleanup or something, just really step back and think, is it is it worth the time, the, the effort, the wear and tear on the body and the equipment? Am I fully prepared to take this on? Because, you know, I, I think a customer or a potential customer would be understanding if you told them, no, that's not something that I can do right now. Maybe next year I can, or in the future I can do it, but right now I'm not, I'm not set up for that. And that's, that's hard because you're turning away work, you're turning away money. But it's one, one aspect to owning a lawn care, landscaping, you know, any kind of business like that. You just, you don't want to have to, but, but you kind of do. You have to pick and choose what battles you're going to take on. You know, we've gotten better. We've gotten some some really good jobs here and there. And I'll admit there are some that I've gotten myself into even now that it's like, how are we going to get this done? You just, you kind of find that way. You dig down deep and you get it done and you make it work. But, but honestly, if you can avoid that starting out, you need to do it. Um, I don't know. It's just one of those things I was thinking about today. One of those risk factors, the... It's the stuff that nobody's going to tell you when you start out because it's like, oh, well, you're the new guy on the block. Yeah, you can take that on. Go ahead. We we don't want that. Now you know why the the experienced and, and veteran guys don't want to take stuff on like that. You know, it's just one of those learning experiences that you, you have to go through, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I can see blue sky over there. I think the rain's finally moving out. Yay. Um, but yeah, guys, I guess, uh, like I said, just, just go with your gut on some of this stuff. If you don't think it's something you can do, don't do it. Move on to the next one. There's always another opportunity that'll come up. I know about the last month work's been a little slow. It seems like I know we've been, been busy with mowing, but as far as adding new customers, it, it, it seems like it's kind of dried up a little bit, but within the last week we've added added two more 
to the mowing route and I said I just met with that lady to get a landscaping a pruning job taken care of so it kind of comes and goes you just have to roll with it but uh skies are clearing so I'm gonna move on to the next one and get this day finished up I hope you guys are doing well hope uh hope you're enjoying the weekend getting to relax a little bit and uh don't forget drop a comment like subscribe share this like i said in prior old videos share it with everybody you know even if they're your enemy maybe they'll get some value out of it till next time guys thanks